Everybody, give your attention to this young lady right here. This is Little Aaron from the Outlook. Put your hands together. about the comment Little Aaron that was until I stood next to uh, Big Aaron and realized we're the same height. So, didn't work very well. But um, I am Aaron. Um, I'm not from the outwork per se, but I do help Dan. You help out enough. Yeah, I help out enough. But in a few minutes, Dan's going to come up and he's going to tell you about the outlook. Many of you know what he does, what he's about, what he stands for. For those who don't, it'd be greatly, greatly appreciated if you took a minute to listen. You learn about a lot of Shut up! Thank you. You learn about a lot of things going on in the world that today's society might not tell you. Um, a lot of things that you can think about and think, hey, I'm really lucky to be where I am. I'm not suffering. I'm not going through this. I don't know what this is like. So without any further ado. Give a listen to my friend Nan. Oh, give a big hand to Aaron right there. And that's her second time introducing you. The reason I have the girls come up here with me is because all you younger girls, we need you to listen up. Because you know the deal by now. There's an industry attacking all you young girls. Hitting you with eating disorders. Telling you you're supposed to do bad things because guys tell you to do. So when I have the girls come up here with me, it's to loosen it up and let you younger girls know that you're not powerless. All right. So yo, I'm going to say my thing. You guys know what I'm about. And when I'm done, we got vegan cookies and stuff over there at the table. And I'll explain that in a second. All right. Check this out. Some of you guys know if you read my last booklet, I quote Thich Nhat Han a lot. I'm going to tell you a story about him. He's a Buddhist monk from Vietnam. When he grew up, he was angry. He said he was full of rage, right? He was angry at the French and he was angry at the Americans for coming to his country and destroying it. Now he's one of the biggest peace activists, pacifists in all the world. Martin Luther King actually nominated him for the Nobel Peace Prize. And he holds these retreats. And I was watching a video about one of his retreats. And there was a guy who went to this retreat who was in the Vietnam War, right? And the fact that Thich Nhat Hanh would welcome him there, that right there shows what a great guy he is because these people wrecked his land, but he's still willing to teach this guy. And this guy was in the war and he had seen a lot of his friends get killed. And he one day, to get revenge on the people that had done this, he built an ambush, he built this big trap, like a, like a landmine or something like that. And I watched this interview with this guy. And he said he was angry at what had been done to his people and he wanted revenge. Well, he set this thing up and waited and waited and a bunch of little kids walked into the trap and he blew them all to bits. And when he realized what he had done, he felt so horrible. He spent years and years and years and years thinking about what he had done, just frozen in time, hating himself, hating what had happened to him. And he lived his whole life worried about this, how he'd ruined these little kids' lives. So, he went to one of these retreats and he went up to Thich Nhat Hanh and he told him what had happened. And he said, I've thought about this my whole life, what happened, how I killed these little kids, all because I was angry and I wanted revenge. And the great Thich Nhat Hanh, you know what he said to him? He said to him this, he goes, there's kids right now in this world that are, that are sick and that are suffering and that are starving, kind of what Aaron was just talking about. He goes, all it takes is a little tiny pill to save them, that's it. And it probably costs 50 cents and they don't even have that. And he said to this guy, you can spend all these years and just spend these decades thinking about how you killed these little kids by accident. But in the meantime, all these other kids had died in other places. And he goes, you, you're the key. You can help save these kids. You can help make people away. You can do something. So he told the guy, you've got to turn your life around and you've got to do something with what happened to you. He goes, you can't change the past, but you can help save the lives of kids in the future. And I thought that was genius to say that, especially with this guy who was from Vietnam and he was so angry about what these people had done to his country. So here's the thing though, right? The point of that is, it's like the Wu-Tang Clan says, right? You can't, you can't drink your life away, smoke your life away, dream your life away, you know the other one. Exactly. 
Wu-Tang Clan. Here's the thing, right? You can't sit there living in the past, drinking and doing drugs and wasting your life. Because there's years and years ahead of you. People are living to be 100 years old right now. You can't live your life like that. If that guy can do that with his life, then anyone can do with, with their life things that are a lot minor and a lot less aggressive than what happened to him. And here's another thing too. When they talk about that little pill, see that's the thing I talk about medication and sometimes people misunderstand what I'm saying. Medication is for kids who are dying and got flies all over them. That's medication. Medication is when the doctor says, you're done, you need to take this. That's medication, right? Running to take a Tylenol every time you get a paper cut, that makes me nervous, because I see a lot of people doing that. I see people wake up from a nap. When I wake up from a nap, I feel like I just, like I feel fine, my headache goes away. I see people wake up from a nap and they run right to that cabinet and they take an Advil and all this other stuff. I don't think that's what medication's for. When I was a little kid, you had maybe one kid in the whole classroom that was on Ritalin. Now, you go in the classroom, every single kid's on medication. Here's the thing, right? Kids are creative and they're full of energy, and we're trying to suppress their energy. Just because a kid's bouncing off the walls doesn't mean he needs medication. Maybe some of you have medication, that's fine. I'm not judging any of you, but I do think we're an over-medicated society and it's worth pointing out. So look, right, on that table tonight, You'll notice, Megan, my friend Megan, she made the free vegan cookies, the peanut butter cups. All my websites are on there, thank you. She does an awesome job, she be here tonight. She's cooking up a storm, that's all animal free products. And when you're over there, definitely take my pamphlets. All my websites are on there if you wanna check out some more of what I have to say, my articles, my blogs, watch some of these videos that we put out on the internet, when the you know, places me talking in other places and People getting into it, and you can comment on it and do whatever you want, say whatever you want. My my ideas are mine, and they're strict. And if you ever heard me before, you know I live a strict lifestyle. No no alcohol, no tobacco, no meat, no dairy, nothing. I don't go to strip clubs. I don't engage myself in girls going wild and things that hurt women. But not everyone can live that way. That's tough, and I don't expect you to. But just be open-minded to what I have to say. There's another thing we have over there. You know how I'm always telling you girls about how with the makeup they tested on animals and all this other stuff, and a lot of the things you have are tested on animals. A lot of the things you put on your face are nasty, and there's chemicals in it. We got my friend Maureen from the Airborne Company over there. She's got samples of, of our vegan, all natural makeup. She also made some vegan muffins too. Please, all you girls, go over there, check that stuff out. I'm always telling you girls about this. Maureen's here tonight, you can check that out. You can take some of her pamphlets, you can take some of mine. I got my friend Martin open a recording studio, some of his pamphlets are there. There's a lot of stuff over there if you wanna check it out and you can talk to me too.